Hi everyone, it's Henry here. And following on from last week's video where we took a look at the 18 different schemes for the various Space Marine Legions that are part of the new Legions Imperialis game, this week we're going to be taking a look at the Solar Auxilia. Now this is the army I'm going to choose to collect and play with for this game, and it's also a great opportunity for me to talk to you a little bit about the probably the biggest inspiration for me since I got back in the hobby, which is this book, Model Masterclass, Volume 1. The majority of the stuff in here is by Mark Bedford and Phil Stachinskis, and these guys were big military modelling fans, that style of painting and, and modelling, and it was incredible to me when the first time I saw these techniques and this kind of look used on Warhammer miniatures, and really it was the hook that got me back in, and it's stuff that I have continued to paint for myself personally all the way through, regardless of what I've been doing. And I always wanted a guard army painted in this sort of way to this standard at this size, and it was never going to happen. But these new solar minis, the tanks in particular, are so detailed that I was like, I reckon I can give this a go. So my goal with that was to create a gaming army where I could still get the same vibe and, and feel that we get when we look at these incredible sort of one-off diorama pieces that the guys have done in this book, but across an army and on a much smaller scale. So I was going to need to sort of identify what I liked about them so much, see if I could simplify that, see how it would work scaled down. And I'm really, really happy with the result. This is probably the favourite thing I've done for the channel in a long, long time. So I hope you enjoy. Let's paint. So one little hobbying detail that I'm going to do before I get on with painting the miniatures is add some whippy aerials to my squadron command tanks. Uh, not the overall command tank that I'm going to wait for the Stormhammer uh, kit to come out uh, and I'll do quite a bit more conversion work on that one. But I think for squadron leaders it'd be nice to have something that's easy to mark them out at a glance. So some little, little you know, whippy communications type aerials uh, should work really well for that. I'm going to do it, I haven't done the rust for this batch because I'm going to wait for a different variant of the uh, the rust, but I've done them on some Malkadors and I've done them on the, uh, the lead Bane Blade. Uh, and it's fairly obvious I think where the little communications nodes, whatever you want to call them are, uh, on the minis. Um, at least that's what I'm interpreting them as. So what we're going to do here is a very old uh, military modelling technique. I am not necessarily suggesting you go out and get uh, a lighter and melt plastic, but this is what I am doing. I'm sure there's better ways of doing it, but this is what I do, this is what I've been shown. We're going to heat a piece of plastic sprue up, ideally not so it goes on fire like I'm about to do in a second. Um, and I like to do it on the sprues where there's a bit of chonk at either end of them so you can pull it, but basically heat it up enough so it goes soft and then you're just going to pull. This enables you to create any sort of thickness you want uh, of plastic, sort of flexi aerial stuff. Um, at larger tanks I've tended to use brass rod uh, and like bristles off a, off a brush, but this was perfect for this, uh, this sort of scale because I can make them different sizes. Now I've been itching to do this sort of green scheme on something for ages and the opportunity came up obviously to do this. I'm doing Renegade Solar here, um, sort of traitor solar if you will, uh, and it was a great opportunity to try this green. So I've simplified things, if I was doing this on a bigger tank I would, I would use more paints, but for this we're going to go over a black primer uh, and I'm going to use dull green and this is an ammo by MIG acrylic, just a normal water braced acrylic. It's in my airbrush. I've thinned this maybe one drop of thinner for every two drops of paint. It's already a very dilute paint. I'm spraying about 25 psi and I'm spraying through a 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle. And for this project, I'm using our Harder and Steenbeck uh, Evolution. As you can see, I've built the layers up over that black base coat, kind of leaving it dark at the top of the sides and dark in the areas that are facing away from the, the sun. And then I'm continuing that process and refining it by using, let's get this right, US. APC interior green, basically a lighter green. I'm going to list all the paints I use for this project. There's not many of them. Please don't get hung up on using exactly the same ones. If, if you've got something similar, like I'm sure it would look amazing, like it's it's really not important. But if you want to follow along exactly, then I will list as ever. I'll list all the paints that are used. So you can see there we're further refining that modulation. So we've got dark at the top, light at the bottom, and then at the sides. And then when we look down on the tank, it's lighter at the top uh, and darker in those sort of areas of shadow. So that's provided a nice bit of contrast already of light and dark. And then an additional step I'm going to do here is rather than do edge highlighting and chipping and all the rest of it, I'm just going to go in with a dry brush. And this is of a very, very light color. This is called pale blue gray. It's a nice thick paint, a Vallejo model color paint. And I'm just taking my time here to dry brush, staying in the one direction. So ideally I'm just catching all the sort of 
upper edges uh, of everything. And this, as I said, this is a gaming army for me. Everything I do here is about making it easy to replicate and so I can build big armies and get them on the table. I'm not stressing about the small stuff, ironically, uh, in this case. Um, so that's my green kind of done. That's my main color done. And for any stripes and things like that, I'm just going to hand paint them in. I'm not going to worry about masking things off and stuff. And I was, <laughs> our commission chief Ben is a, a military history buff. So I kept asking him about, you know, where would these go on tanks? I'm using things like model masterclass as reference. I've tried not to use real world things as reference. Um, and then I've double checked in case I accidentally do combinations that you don't want to be painting necessarily. Um, but it's really just picking colours that I think would look nice together. So I've gone for whole red here, which is one of my absolute favourite paints. Has been since I got back in, probably because of the style of painting I, I got back in through. Um, and you can kind of see on the tanks, there will be, I think there'll be obvious lines presented by panels on the tanks that you can kind of use as your guide. And it's just a case of making it look interesting. Um, so I put a black stripe in the middle of it because I thought it would look kind of cool. And then I figured, well, I'm probably going to put a decal on here somewhere, maybe a number or a symbol, and that will look really nice next to the uh, the black and red if that's in white or something. So I figured that was a good idea. And then I'm going to paint all the secondary weapons, uh, so like the sponsons and the hull mounted weapons and stuff in black as well. Once that's on, I'm dry brushing it with a mix of hull red and a little of the pale blue gray mixed in. And I've done this over the black as well because I kind of like how it sort of simulates a bit of chipping that's uh, that's happened over the black paint anyway again really really simple techniques these but they work so really happy with this as a sort of base point the tracks are one of the areas that are painted perhaps differently to how we often see things painted in Warhammer 40k I'm not going to use metallic paints on them I'm just base coating them using a brown now this is called dark rust this is by Vallejo Panzer Aces um, I thinned this down quite a bit on my palette because it was easier to wash it in almost to the tracks to cover them it wasn't wash consistency it wasn't that thin but it was certainly dilute enough that it flowed very easily off my brush um, i found when it was thicker it was just a real pain trying to paint all the individual uh, track links on there also painted the exhaust in this way and over those i stippled a color called light rust so you can see here it's a dark brown and a orangey brown uh, over it again just a well rust is what, what, what we're representing here so again, taking all my favourite things from those large scale versions and just trying to simplify it, seeing if I could make it look cool on this small scale. But nearly everything on this scheme is two or three steps sort of at most, um, which for me is ideal. Now the odd tank is going to have these uh, are going to have these fuel barrels on, and I thought it would be nice to just bring another colour in here. You could have left it the same as every chance it was sprayed the same as the the rest of the tank when that was sprayed, but I thought it was a good opportunity to bring a different colour in. So I've just gone for a green here, this is Militarum green contrast, straight out of the pot, not thinned at all, one coat over, job done. I just want to take a minute to say thanks to all of you that's supporting us over on Patreon. Um, the likes and subscribes here make a massive difference, but those of you that support us over on Patreon, you're allowing myself and Andy to, to produce these videos each week here and, and longer format ones over on Patreon. And we're ever so grateful for it um, and we hope that we're bringing you you know fun projects a mixture of our own personal ones showcase level stuff army painting things uh, and all the usual stuff you see here over on youtube and, and obviously if it wasn't for your guys support over there we we wouldn't be doing it so we're hugely hugely uh thankful for for all that support um and i also really liked how this barrel came out so that's why i've left this uh, left this as a longer bit on the video now for the chipping I'm not going to go in and do what's basically my favorite part of painting which is tippy tap chips um, but I needed to represent a little bit of dirt and grime uh, so for this I'm dry brushing with a color called German camo black brown it's just what it sounds like it's a very dark brown color and I'm sort of stippling slash dry brushing this just in random spots really bits where there might be a bit more damage and it, it just helps grunge it up a little discolor it a little in certain areas so again at a glance and particularly at three foot away it's not this pristine looking thing and that's all it needs to be. Now I'm not going to do any troops at the moment uh, until we get the Dracosan transports kits. I'm not going to bother doing any infantry, but I thought it's inevitable I'm going to get asked about it. Keep it simple. That's my plan. Um, I love the scheme for the Chthonian headhunters, essentially red and, and black, and I'm going to do that, but I'm going to switch out the silver colour for brass on mine. My guys are going to be uh, aligned to the word bearers because myself and my 
group of mates down here are playing through the Shadow Crusade as a campaign using uh, Legion's Imperialis. Probably use a bit of 30k as well for the odd odd uh, sort of boarding actions type thing, but largely just uh, in Epic and AT. Uh, so that's how I want mine to look, but but mega simple. Base coat, wash, that's all they're getting. Um, to, you know, that's, that's all they need for me at this scale. For the odd bit of metal that is, I'm going to paint on these tanks, I'm going to use one of my favourite paints currently. It's an Ammo MIG dry brush paint. Uh, it's called Gun Metal, and it's kind of this purpley brown, silver colour. Um, it dries really matte for a metallic as well. I, I just love this paint. Um, so I've done that on a few of the guns because it's Warhammer, right? So it needs a little bit of metal on there. Now I'm going to give the whole model uh, quite a heavy coat of gloss paint. This is because, uh, gloss varnish rather, this is because I'm going to do the decals. I'll link up in the top, I'll do my normal decal process, but also a nice heavy gloss at this stage will just protect all that paintwork there. So although I'm going to do stuff over the top of it, which might rub off the more I handle it over time, it shouldn't damage any of the work that's underneath this varnish. So again, it's an epic army, it's going to look absolutely fine. Um, yeah, I'm not concerned about it. And the final finish, I've gone for lucky uh, matte varnish. So a few layers of that, good to go. Now I'm going to talk about the oil wash stage. This is something I did on the marine tanks. I've had a few questions about it. So I'm going to leave this stage in, in full um, and hopefully it answers those, those questions from you guys that may have been struggling a little bit with it. So I've chosen Starship Filth here. It's a sort of dark grey green colour, as you can see. I'm thinning that down with normal mineral spirits. So from the DIY shop, we call them white spirits over here in the UK. Thin them down with that because they're going to dry much quicker. They're going to evaporate nice and quickly. Um, which is something I want when I intend to be filming videos. If I'm taking longer, I often use something like Sansador by Windsor & Newton, which prolongs the drying time of the oils and stuff, but I don't need to prolong the drying time of this oil. Um, but one of the downsides is this, it, it really stinks. Um, but I'm just making sure it's thoroughly mixed in and we've got a wash consistency. What do I mean by that? Well, you know, a very, very wet mix um, that when we apply it, we can see what's underneath it, we can see through it. But also I barely have to touch the model and it's gonna wick itself into all the recesses. Even though the model has got a matte finish, um, because of that uh, mineral spirit base to all of this, it's still got great, you know, very low surface tension. So it just travels into all the nooks and crannies very, very simply. So you see my brush is not overloaded with paint here. I keep going back, getting extra on there. If I get too much on the brush, I'll touch it off on a piece of kitchen paper. I don't wanna flood the miniature at any one time because I don't want the paint to particularly pool in any one area. Or if it does pull, like in the recesses, I don't want loads of paint to be in there because that can cause sort of funny things to happen when it dries. And I try to work around the tank quite methodically, sort of panel by panel or at this scale, sort of area by area. And what this is going to do is just create tons of definition, bring a bit of shadow in, and because of the colour of it, it'll just help give a grimier feel uh, to the whole model, which is ideal. So it's taken me probably, well, yeah, best part of a minute, I think, to wash the tank. And then I'm going to put it aside uh, and I time this exactly. So once I'm happy with it, pop it down and I've left it for exactly uh, 30 minutes. So when you've got areas like the barrel there, just making sure when I move my brush off at the end, I'm removing it when I'm in an area, like in a recess. They're down towards the base of it. So that's where, if any of the paint is going to pull, it's going to pull down in those recess areas. But take a look at the sort of base of that barrel, because that's an area we'll come back to shortly where there has been quite a large accumulation of the paint. So as you can see, I'm taking my time doing it. I'm not just slapping it all over. And sometimes, depending on the colour, I may have to do this process two or three times, letting it dry in between each time. So this is 30 minutes later. I haven't touched it, it's just been sat on the desk. And you can see the majority of it, it's dry to the touch. But the base of the barrel there where there was quite a lot on there, it's still quite wet. Now I want to move on and get on with the paint job. So at this stage, I just popped a hairdryer on it for 30 seconds and that's dried it enough uh, for me to now go in and do the cleanup. So for the cleanup, I'm using a soft brush here. See, and every so often I will dip that in mineral spirits and then almost dry it completely. And then I can use that to erase any oil that's in areas that I don't want it to be and just kind of buff and smooth out other areas like the base of the uh, barrel there where it doesn't need to be. 
and that's it. And then if I didn't think it was enough, I would go in with another coat and so on and so forth. As it was for me, that one coat at that consistency was, was really, really nice. For the metals and the black parts of the tank, I've gone in with a colour here called Bitume. So it's another oil wash. And it's just obviously a much smaller area. Uh, it's a lovely sort of dark purple brown colour. Uh, oh, I also forgot to paint those pistons in before. It's just a chrome, like, yeah, just I'm reading them as pistons anyway, so that's what I've done. Uh, and then on any of the exhausts, uh, I have gone in and done a little wash of light rust here. So a nice bright orange colour. Exactly the same technique, just a much, much smaller area. Once all that is dry, I'm now going to go in and sort of add the final touches to the tank. Uh, I love them. They're so small. They come together so quick. Um, but yeah, for a bit of scorching on the barrels, first of all, I'm going in with my airbrush with Agrax Earthshade. Now I've put maybe a drop or two of thinner in that cup and the rest of that is Agrax in there uh, just to help it sort of flow through nicely and prevent it drying on the tip too much. So a few coats of that down the barrel and then I'm going to get black. Same black I used in my brush, so I've diluted it right down so it goes through the airbrush. And just doing the very ends of the barrels and then I'm going to do tips of the exhausts and a little bit of the hull next to where the exhausts are just to create a little bit of scor scorching again and more dirt and grime just a little bit teeny tiny bit here and there I think it's adding up across the model and giving us a really good sort of look uh, that, 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 I'm, that I'm going for then for the tracks uh, I'm going to use a pigment wash here now we notice I did this last week on the bases for the dreadnoughts I'm going to do exactly the same thing uh, on the tracks here so I've taken uh, light sienna is this pigment color here mixing it with airbrush thinner the pigments by Vallejo the thinner is by Vallejo I don't believe that's important um, but it's worth mentioning that they are you know together and this is how Vallejo suggests using it and creating a pigment wash uh, and then I'm going to wash that down the tracks now I had to do this three times on most of the tanks it seems to be quite an inconsistent spread uh, of where the pigment is deposited and I guess that makes sense because you know it's this sort of fine thing suspended in the in the uh, the thinner uh, so yeah no rush you know let it dry on its own probably took 20 minutes to dry on its own hair dryer go again kind of similar to the oils to be honest um, but yeah really really happy with the the effect and I just love how it makes the tracks look you know without using metallics I think it's really fun and then the final touch for me is going to be the lenses and for that I'm using a very very bright silver color here so chrome and then over the top of that I'm going to use Tamiya clear paints so these are kind of like a candy lacquer paint I use clear red clear blue and clear green in the end uh, on my tanks and it took me two to three coats uh, on each lens to get the deep color and that is every single step that I've done on these miniatures so really not that many and every individual stage very very simple um, which is ideal for me you know I, I I want this scheme to be very very easy for me to replicate so that I can essentially have batches of this army constantly on the go just sat on the desk so that when I get spare five minutes here and there I can do a little step and hopefully that just means that as time goes on week by week ticking over ticking over I'm going to build up squadrons of these tanks and it's going to look awesome it was a a really fun experience painting like this it, it, it's I often talk about painting for gaming and painting for armies and more often than not those tend to be with a sort of I believe fairly high level of army painting involved sort of a, a kind of a passion project type army that you, you know, you're giving yourself six months 12 months to paint you know a big army of this is much much quicker than that for me this is proper gaming um you know I want more and more things every week when I turn up to play my mates you know, for me, Epic is about viewing these armies you know, from afar, not looking at models in isolation. And, it, and it's meant that I've had to make compromises. And I'm okay with that. There are tons of mold lines on these that I've missed. And as I'm painting them, normally I would get really upset because I'd be like, oh no, I've got to photograph this and, and look at it up close to see the details, blah, blah, blah. That just doesn't matter with these. You know, if I've missed a mold line, I'm just not going to stress about it because the time spent stressing, the time going back and fixing things like that, that I cannot see when I'm three foot away and they're down on the table is time I could be spending painting more tanks. Um, and that's how I feel with this project. So it's kind of just enough of everything to make them look cool and no more. Because for me, to make these models look significantly better is a heavy investment of more time. And maybe I will do that. Maybe when the Stormhammer comes out, I'll do one to, you know, like display level to have on my shelf and, and kind of make me smile. Maybe. More likely I'll spend that time trying to paint six of them up or something like that, you know. 
Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. A lot more uh, personal, this, this project, but awful lot of armor for the last sort of six, eight videos. So I think the next couple of weeks, we ought to be looking at something much more organic, uh, much more gribbly, uh, maybe a bit more fantastical. But yeah, let me know if you've got any questions about what I've done in this video. Pop them down in the comments. I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Uh, sorry about the audio for this week's video, guys. I've been a bit under the weather this week, but I did want to get a video out for you. Um, so I hope it hasn't been uh, too bad. So if you've enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit subscribe. It really, really does help us out, helps the channel grow, um, and we really, really do appreciate it. So thanks for your support. Take care. I'll see you next time. If you've liked any of the models in this video and you fancy having an army of them yourself, but perhaps you don't have the time or wherewithal to get it done, consider dropping us an email at commissions at cultofpaint.com and maybe Ben can sort you out.